Hi guys, um, I just um, finished this sheet uh, that I really love. I think it has a lot of value um, uh, and uh, I would like to share some uh, comments on it. And I will also uh, link uh, downstairs in the description of video, uh, the link to the sheet and you will be able also to download it and, uh, and, and just use it for yourself. Or uh, I can also, if you send me, um, uh, paste in the comment your email, I can also give you access to the sheet so that you can also edit it and improve it. Uh, it's a little bit like an open source project. So, so I really appreciate that if that's of interest to you. Um, uh, so uh, this sheet, um, I really love it because it goes back uh, a lot in time uh, and, uh, and you can learn so much from it. Um, so uh, it is the returns of stocks um, since 1928. Uh, it starts in 1928 and also the returns for gold. Um, and then also uh, the returns for uh, PP World, which is just uh, uh, the permanent portfolio. It's an idea that Harry Brown uh, developed, but he had four assets. He had stocks, uh, gold, but also bonds and cash. But I kicked bonds and cash out because I think these assets are not um, are not uh, good investments. Cash always uh, returns uh, much less than real inflation, so it's just uh, a very bad uh, investment. Uh, 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 and uh, and uh, and uh, bonds are peaking out. Uh, Long-term bond rates are about two percent or so. Uh, sometimes it's it's even one percent or so. It's just crazy, and it's also way below real in, real inflation. Uh, real inflation, uh, I estimate around um, six um, five percent. That uh, prices of goods, services, um, utilities, uh, assets go up per year uh, on average uh, uh, and lose value. Uh, uh, the U.S. dollar loses about five percent value per year in purchasing power. Uh, that's my estimate. Um, just from uh, another video, you can see that there, where I go through a lot of prices. Uh, and where you can see that actually the average price increase is 5% per year. So for cash, <clears throat> uh, it has 0% per year. You lose 5% per year. That's just not uh, an investment. And um, and, uh, and long-term bonds is the same story. Uh, if you get 2% per year for 30 years in a row, you lose 3% per year uh, in purchasing power. So, so, so these assets, Harry Brown brought them in because they do offer a lot of stability in the portfolio. Uh, that's true. So, 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 so long -term bonds, uh, they do offer a lot of stability in the portfolio. Uh, but since they are in a, a clear bubble, uh, I think that it's not worth it to put them in because um, stability is not so uh, valuable. If it uh, costs you a lot in returns, uh, then you can better kick out that stable uh, Stable asset, and the same for cash. It offers a lot of stability, uh, but uh, but it, it does come at the long term returns. And so uh, I think actually stocks and gold were the only only assets, uh, and of course real estate. But that's not practical. Um, uh, and of course art also. That's very difficult. Uh, uh, but for for a, a portfolio where you want to preserve the purchasing power of your capital, uh, stocks and gold make sense because they cannot be inflated by the government. Uh, uh, it is not connected to the currency. Uh, it doesn't matter if the currency goes to shit. Uh, um, uh, these stocks and uh, gold are independent of that. They keep their value uh, and they just go up with inflation. So I think for a long term uh, portfolio, if you want to st st a stable, I, a, a, the right combination of stability and returns and preservation of wealth, I think it makes sense to only have stocks and only have gold. Uh, but indeed, the strategy of the permanent portfolio to balance this every year, 50-50. Uh, so you take 50% stocks, 50% gold, and every year at the end of the year, one has gone up, the other one has gone down uh, in relation to each other. And so you sell some of that and you buy some of the other. That does create a lot more stability. So, uh, <laughs> and, 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 um, and you can see that very clearly in, this, uh, in these returns here. Um, so 2017 is the last uh, full year that we have, and stocks did very well with 24%. Gold had 13%. This is all expressed in US dollars, uh, even though the stocks are global. Uh, it's um, uh, in 1928 we start with uh, S&P 500, 
<clears throat> but after 1970, we switched to the MSCI um, uh, World Index, uh, uh, and uh, and it's actually a GDP weighted World Index. So countries like the US are much more weighted than very small countries uh, that with very small economies. Uh, but I think this makes sense if you invest stocks globally that you do, do it, of course, GDP weighted. Uh, and this index is available on the internet and starting 1970, uh, the stocks are invested that way. And, uh, and this is uh, including of, um, uh, these are net returns uh, starting in 1970. So uh, it includes the dividends that you get. Uh, and it's also um, uh, takes into account some uh, um, taxes um, that get deducted. Uh, so, so it really tries to present uh, a real return uh, portfolio. Uh, and also, um, uh, gold uh, is, uh, I think, should be held physical uh, in this uh, portfolio. Harry Brown explains that very well, why it's very important to have your gold physical. This is the, the ideas here of this portfolio that needs to protect you against all scenarios. And so one scenario is certainly that uh, you get a Great Depression where... Um, where um, um, gold gets uh, confiscated by the government, as has happened in 1932, uh, and then you lose your gold and half, half your portfolio is gone. Uh, that should not never uh, happen. So the gold needs to be stored physically under your own uh, possession uh, so that uh, it cannot be stolen by governments. Uh, uh, of course, stocks... Uh, uh, so uh, that's just the idea of this portfolio. Um, so if you look at the returns, uh, I think um, uh, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, so, 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 so what you see is that you often have a period where stocks were very good, and then you have a period where gold is very good. And for example, when we start in 1928, we have here the average uh, uh, returns of the past 10 years uh, that starts 10 years later. So stocks here in 1937 have returned uh, on average per year minus 1%, and the same for gold. Um, this is, uh, uh, sorry, no, uh, this is not, uh, gold has returned 5% per year, uh, the last 10 years. And the average of that, uh, if you would have invested, uh, with the PPP, uh, 50, 50, you would have, uh, an average return of 4% per year. Um, but as you can see, um, uh, 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 like the returns here, uh, you have to look at these columns, uh, change. So um, uh, the 1930s is, of course, the era of the Great Depression. And so uh, stocks did very poorly. That's why you have minus 1% per year on average, uh, whereas gold actually went up in value after it got confiscated by the government. Uh, the government also uh, uh, well raised the value of gold uh, by uh, 56% in 1932. And so if you were wise to store your gold physically uh, 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 in your own possession you 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 it could not have been taken from you and you would have had this uh gain of uh, 56 percent on your gold while in the meantime uh stock markets did very poorly um but uh but uh, things change so the average returns of the last 10 years are very interesting to see how that goes but what you see is that stocks continue to do better and better over the 40s uh, and 50s and are peaking out at the end of the 50s uh, uh, with an average return of 20% per year over the past uh, 10 years. Um, and uh, uh, But with gold, it goes the other way around. Uh, uh, whereas the re average returns were 5% per year over 10 years, it goes down to, at the end of the 60s, at uh, minus 1% uh, per year or minus 2% per year. Uh, um, so while stocks start to do very, very well in the 40s and 50s and 40s and, and 50s, like average returns here of like 20% per year, that's a lot. Eh? Uh, gold gives you an average return of minus 2% per year. So that's very bad. Eh? Uh, and, and if you then uh, invest via the permanent portfolio, uh, your average return here is about 9% per year eh? because you have both uh, over the last 10 years. So, uh, so that's how this permanent portfolio works. Uh, and this is the 60s. Uh, um, um, what you see is that uh, uh, it turns around here. Uh, um, uh, gold starts to, uh, in the 70s, 
Uh, gold starts to perform very well with an average return at the end of the 70s of 32% per year over the last 10 years. Eh? Uh, it had uh, 30% per year uh, in 1980, whereas uh, stocks uh, have an average return of only 9% per year over the last uh, 10 years, uh, a lot less. But that does give you an average return of uh, 23% per year if you have a, a permanent portfolio like that. Um, and, uh, and so uh, there's always one asset basically that uh, lifts it. Um, uh, you could say, hey, but 9%, 9% is not a lot. Um, uh, it's actually pretty good also for stocks. Uh, so, so why complain? But actually that's not true because uh, we will also take inflation into account and, 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 and inflation uh, is not uh, what the government says. Uh, the prices go up, but they say it only goes up by 2% per year. That's not certainly not true. It goes up by 5% per year, the prices. But if you want to look at, uh, uh, it's very hard to measure the increase of prices. Uh, I've, I've tried that and you can see the video. I will link it in the description below. But this is just, uh, you just take some prices. Um, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, if you can make your job much easier by just looking at the amount of money they print because that's, that's published. Uh, and, and, and it's a simple economic formula. Uh, that you can apply to that to to uh, to estimate how much prices actually do go up uh, and, and 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 so the way i do this here is um, uh, with the inflation I, I i just take the numbers of the of the federal reserve here um, 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 their balance sheet eh? uh, and 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 what they do is they just create money out of thin air and um, and then they buy assets with that uh, such as uh, government bonds, uh, but during economic crisis like 2008, they will buy everything. They even buy uh, uh, how do they call it? crappy, crappy loans that have gone uh, broke uh, that the bank cannot sell for any money to anyone else because nobody wants it anymore. It's uh, like worth zero. Well, the Federal Reserve will each create money and buy those worthless, uh, worthless assets for. Uh, a price much higher than the market price to save those banks. So uh, basically, uh, and then they book it as an asset uh, on the value that they paid for. And so, so, but basically, it, it, the, uh, the balance sheet of the, of the Federal Reserve shows very clearly how much money is in circulation, uh, and that's just how much assets they have. Well, all these assets uh, have been bought for uh, money that they created out of thin air. Of course, they also buy sometimes gold. Uh, and, and that's deducted because gold, um, um, but that's extremely small. The balance sheet of the Fed, it's only like 1% of assets or less is gold. Uh, all the others is, 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 is bonds. So uh, uh, that's negligible. Um, but what is very important though, is that the amount of money they create, you can deduct 2% per year because that's how much the economy is growing. Um, because let's say uh, the economy grows with 2% and they create 10% more money in that year. Uh, how much will prices go up? Well, um, uh, not uh, if you like if you create 10% more money, but there is the same amount of goods and services in the economy, then prices will go up with 10%. But the economy grows. And so every year you have 2% more goods and services available in that economy. And so if you create 10% more money, while well, prices will not go up with 10% because you do also have an increase in the amount of goods and services available. And if that increases 2%, you can just deduct that and you have an increase of 8%, not 10% in the, in the prices. So, so this is all taken into account here. And so uh, if you look at this inflation column, what you see here is the amount of money that's printed that year, so in 2017, minus 2% minus the gold uh, on the balance sheet and also minus 2% uh, per year. And then you see that, <clears throat> for example, 2017, they did not uh, create inflation. They actually um, created uh, deflation, uh, the inverse, which is that uh, the amount of money they created was less than the growth of the economy. Uh, they actually here in this case just did not create any money in 2017. The balance sheet did not go up, but since the economy has grown with 2% per year, uh, you have a minus 2% uh, inflation, which is a deflation. 
However, the average amount of money they created the last 10 years is still 18%, which is uh, staggering, uh, which is a lot. And why is that? Because, well, if we go back 10 years, we just have also the financial crisis of 2008 included. And, um, <clears throat> and, um, and so in the financial crisis, they start to create a lot of money. Uh, in one year, they doubled the amount of money in circulation not in notes and bills eh? they do, didn't but but they but in, in in digital money mainly eh? that they issue out of thin air and then they give to banks that are going broke and uh, and buy a uh, crappy assets that are worthless but they give the bank actually uh, much more money than the value of the assets and so that way they, they increase the amount of money in circulation uh, and they did that with 80 percent eh? and that's why uh, like in 2007 the average amount of money created the last 10 years is only 6%, then it jumps in 2008 to 11% per year. And it just continues to go up because it, they were not done in 2009. They create another 30% more uh, money in circulation, another 8% and another 30%. So they did this for four or five years, a huge increase eh? because you do 30% in one year. That's just tremendous. Eh? So that really brings up the amount. And then they have one year, they don't do anything basically. But then again, 30% and again, 10%. So it's only like the past three years that they have not been really printing. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, and so, um, but, but this um, is very important because this will show also in prices, but not immediately, this takes time. Huh? So it, it, you could say like, hey, but look, Mark, like you can't say this is inflation because look, you have like, okay, 20% inflation per year. Uh, over the last 10 years, but prices did not go up so much. Yeah, this is clearly measurable. Uh, and this, there's a lot of truth to that uh, critique. Uh, it's true. If you measure prices, you will not get an average increase of 20%. Uh, it's true. Like uh, I, when I do the exercise, I only get an average of about 5%. Uh, that's true. Uh, I, I can't, uh, I can't, uh, uh, yeah, I can't really, um, the only counter argument I have to that is that, um, uh, well, it's the inverse is true too. Like, for example, you see that the amount of money printed here uh, on average over the last 10 years in 1956 is 0%. So you could say it's 0% inflation, but that's also not true because the prices certainly went up with a lot more over the last 10 years here in 1956 than uh, 0%. Uh, if you hear the stories, from people that go to war, uh, uh, like just if you just look at real estate prices of the over those periods is easily uh, traceable, and they do continue to go up every year with seven percent. Uh, same with stock markets, you can see that here. Eh? Stock markets go up here on average with eighteen percent per year, but that's not uh, is a lot. A big part of that is inflation, of course. Eh? Or if you take the average of stocks and gold, eh? they still go up at nine percent per year, but an economy does not grow with 9% per year. Eh? Uh, an economy grows to 2% per year. So all returns above that, eh? if you invest in the index of an economy, uh, being eh, its stocks and, and its gold, your average return will be the same as uh, the growth of the economy, uh, which is only 2%. Eh? So if returns are a lot high, uh, higher than 2%, you know that that are not returns, it's inflation. On average, of course, every year is different. Sometimes like 5%, sometimes like minus 3%. But on average, your returns with a broad index should be real returns after inflation, 2% per year. So so <clears throat> uh, just just to say that like the amount of money that's printed does not ex uh, immediately show in prices. For example, a lot of the money I was created in 2008 here, um, uh, uh, basically, um, what we should have seen is uh, declining prices. Uh, if banks go broke, if banks lose a lot of money, well, that's actually the, uh, the people that have the, 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 the savings accounts with those banks are the, the ones that lose the money because they are the, the real investors behind the bank. Hey, they trust the money to the bank, the bank invests, the bank loses it. Well, normally the people should lose it. In this case, they didn't lose it. The bank was bailed out. <clears throat> but if they would have lost it, you would see that prices go down a lot because many people would be suddenly a lot poorer and so they would stop spending money in the economy and you, you would see that prices go down a lot more than they actually have uh, now so uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 so 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 
uh, yeah, it just takes like uh, time for these, uh, these, these, the money that's created to show. But if you want to see if it's in the long term representable, well, in the long term, you see here that the money that's created by the Fed is, 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 is from 1928 eh, till 1971. Uh, it was a 6.7 percent per year that they created uh, extra money, and this actually is actually really very close to the amount of the average price increases uh, in the economy. Uh, so I think uh, that's why I take these numbers because actually it's very close. Um, uh, but if you count since 1971 till last year 19 uh, so 20, 2017 the average amount of money they created was 7.2 percent uh no uh sorry it was two percent higher it's nine percent but then you deduct the two percent uh, for, for the growth of the economy so actually the amount of inflation created was 7.2 percent and this should also be uh, how much prices are going up on average uh is this correct i i think it's close to the truth i think you can make a case that it's only five percent uh, if you just take like i do in the other video uh certain i uh, product services uh, and you take at the average of asset prices you can make a case it's only five percent and not seven percent uh, but uh, i think if you do more research on it you will find certain uh, assets that actually went up a lot more uh, the problem with these kind of calculations is how much do you weigh each asset and each goods and service? It's an impossible calculation and it's very subjective, but I'm sure that you can mix it in such a way that you do get price increases of 7% per year. Uh, uh, but basically you can just avoid all that research by just looking at the amount of money that's created minus the growth of the economy. And that's, this is the result here on average. The inflation created by the Fed in the US dollar economy system is 7.2% per year since 1971. What are the average returns in that period from stocks is 9.5%. But you have 7.2% inflation. That means the real returns of stocks since 71 is 1.9%, is 2%. And this is very, very, very correct because that's that's true. Like those are the returns. If you invest in the economy of the US since 1971, on average, the economy has grown 2%. You invest in the economy after real inflation, eh, 2%. You invest in that economy. Those are the real returns. It's very low. Huh? Uh, if you invest 100,000 uh, US dollars in, uh, in the US economy, on average, you have 2% real returns per year. Eh? Uh, that's only $2,000 eh, that you can spend from that um, from that investment uh, without losing the um, source capital. And the same is true for gold. Gold's real returns are 2% per year. Why? Mm, well, because um, actually gold should not be growing. Um, but I guess maybe the explanation here is that uh, uh, because the economy grows with 2% per year, people become 2% ri uh, richer per year. And so um, yeah, this also shows in, in the value of uh, an asset like gold uh, that goes up with about 2% per year in a real purchasing power. But that's ni since n 1971. Uh, careful here because uh, gold before that from 28 till 71 went down with almost 5% per year in purchasing power. Huh? So so I think this is the, the real story about gold is that actually gold does not give you a return gold will just preserve your purchasing power in the long term uh, and, 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 and 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 that means that this 1.9 percent profit is neutralized by this minus 4.6 percent loss uh, yeah, people that invest in gold from 1928 to 1971 have made a huge loss uh, and why is that uh, because uh, the, val the, the, the value of gold has gone down a lot in the economy. It really it's totally changed. Uh, gold uh, was still uh, in 1920s uh, an asset um, that was very important in the economy. Many people owned physical gold still. Actually, it was only like 30 years or 10, 20 years before that where people were still using gold coins. Uh, I have a story from a, a grandmother that... Uh, uh, yeah, her, her father went working in the U.S. 
um, uh, and came back with gold coins uh, 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 and made a lot of gold coins there. So gold coins were still uh, in this period, the 1910, 20s uh, in usage. Uh, but, uh, but this has totally changed. Uh, people don't, uh, uh, after that it became just bullion storage. People kept uh, storage at home of gold and even that has now faded away. Most people don't store gold anymore. Uh, and, and the central bank used to have eh, until 1931 here a lot of gold uh, in its uh, vaults compared to the amount of uh, US dollars it had uh, in circulation. But uh, this uh, constantly goes down. Eh? So the value of gold, even for central banks that use it uh, to back their currency, also do it less and less. So, 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 so that, uh, but this happened especially between 1928 and 1971 uh, that, that actually... Uh, um, yeah, that you had just a huge increase of amount of uh, dollars in circulation, uh, but it did not reflect in the price of gold uh, because the gold price was stuck at a, a fixed price. And only in 1971, it got, uh, it became, um, it became um, a free to trade. Eh? Like if you see here, the returns of gold versus US dollar is 0%, 0%. It's always like 0% or it goes up a little, it goes even down a little. Eh? So the value of gold here uh, just does not go up versus the US dollar, whereas the amount of US dollars in circulation just continues to go up every decade uh, with a lot. Uh, and so that's why uh, you have this huge loss here. Uh, gold investors just got totally wiped out. Uh, if you invest in gold here in the 1928, uh, even though you have a 50% gain here, uh, it's just still a total disaster. Uh, if you look at average returns and uh, returns after inflation, then uh, this takes into account the numbers you see here, uh, uh, how much dollars are created um, uh, minus growth of economy is here 25% per year uh, in 1950. And why is that? It's the same story as the story you have uh, uh, in the great, uh, in our depression in 2008, a huge amount of money was created. But the same happened in the 1940s here uh, for the war, uh, then uh, the, the world war uh, that broke out in 1942. They started printing huge amounts of money, doubling the amount of US dollars in circulation the first year, more than doubling it the second year, fourth year again, 40% more, uh, again, 30% more. And so uh, you see that the amount of dollars in circulation uh, goes up only with 2% per year in the last 10 years. Uh, in 1941, but then it just jumps, and in a couple of years, the amount of dollars in circulation goes up uh, on average by 20% per year over the last 10 years. So, 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 so this um, this uh, happened, and um, but the price of gold did not go up versus US dollar, zero percent, three percent, minus one percent. Eh? But the amount of US dollars in circulation just explodes. And that means that the real returns after inflation of gold become a total disaster here. Huh? Total disaster. Huh? Uh, uh, people are losing on average 20% per year after inflation uh, over 10 years in a row uh, in 1951. Huh? Uh, and this is where gold books uh, get punished very badly. Huh? And people that believe in economic growth get rewarded eh, because the, the stock markets goes up a lot. Eh? And, and, and of course, you can blame that on, on, on the government here. That the government was actually setting the price. That's true. But the government cannot like is not stronger than markets. Eh? And so why, why, for example, the price here goes up so much is because the government has to had to increase the price of gold. Otherwise, they would lose too much gold from their vaults eh, because people can buy these uh, uh, can buy that gold, or at the time they could, and so if they did, did not increase the price, the 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 value of their, I, they would just get less and less gold. Uh, they would lose their gold. So even though the price is fixed here of gold, it's uh, it's it, it, the, the government after a while does have to increase the price of gold, uh, otherwise they lose too much gold. That's also why in 1970 uh, they 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 did the same, and they 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 uh, said okay, are we. We can't keep the price uh, anymore at this level, uh, so we're going to just let it uh, trade freely, and uh, we stop selling our gold also uh, from the central bank, and then suddenly the price explodes again. Huh? Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so 
I think this is so interesting uh, because, um, uh, well, the biggest question, of course, we have today is um, what's going to happen here? This is just crazy that they have been printing so much money. What, how will that show in the economy? Uh, in the last 10 years, uh, we see the same amount of money increase as we saw during war times in the 1940s uh, or very similar at eh, 20% per year. Uh, what will happen the coming decades? Because many people think that this will show uh, in, 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 in huge price increases, but um, that's not how it goes. Uh, we have seen in the past what happens and, uh, and what happens, uh, uh, we can study here. Uh, so what will happen is that the amount of money that's being created will go down a lot again. Um, uh, so, so the average was here twenty five percent, but the war stops, and the amount of money that's being created by the central bank just go down a lot. And here you can see it's like instead of twenty five percent the last ten years on average, it becomes zero percent over ten years. Uh, the the bank has not raised the amount of money here, uh, and then and that's in nineteen fifties. If you go ten years further, um, of yeah, already in sixties. Uh, it's only 2% per year, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's very low. And, and, and so this uh, makes that actually you don't get those huge price increases that you would expect here. Eh? Um, you don't get them because the amount of money that's created goes down a lot, uh, again. Um, so, 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 so another very interesting thing is to see at uh, the real returns of the permanent portfolio. Um, so you can see that the gold, the real returns here, eh? uh, the actual returns expressed in, uh, in, in, in US dollars can, can go up to 20% per year for a period of 10 years uh, and expressed in US dollars, uh, gold can go down uh, over 10 years here. Eh? Also in 2000, in 2000, over 10 years, you had on average uh, gold went down with 2% per year. But then if you look at uh, after inflation, uh, at the same period, you actually lose a lot more. It's not just 2% per year. You actually lose like 10% per year eh, uh, in the 90s with gold after inflation. Um, and the same is true with um, uh, with stocks. Eh? Stocks um, sometimes uh, are great. Like in the 1970s, after inflation, uh, stocks actually uh, are going down also with 2% per year, even 5% per year here. Uh, for 10 years in a row, you lose 5% per year with, uh, with stocks. Um, so uh, that's possible. Um, and also, sorry, I forgot to say, I should have said in the beginning, but what I learned from Mark Faber, what he says is like, as an investor, you only need to take one decision every decade. Like, uh, to, because every decade, one asset will do very well and another asset will do poorly. Uh, and, and you can see this clearly in these charts here. Um, uh, so, so in the in the twenties, in the during the Great Depression, the right asset was gold because you had five percent per year, whereas stocks you had minus one percent per year. Huh? But this changes uh, by the end of the fifties. Actually, the right asset was stocks. Uh, so in the nineteen forties, you would, should have switched from gold to stocks, and then you would have had thirteen percent per year. Whereas if you kept it in gold, you would have only had two percent per year. Uh, and what do you then in 1950s? You need to make a new decision. Shall I stay in stocks or I go to gold? Well, many would say go back to gold, as you see today also. Let's go back to gold. But that was the wrong move because uh, in the 50s, the average return of stocks is not 10% per year, but it goes up to 20% per year. Whereas gold, instead of having 2% per year, you have minus 2% per year in the, in the 50s. So again, stocks was the right decision. Uh, well, then in the 1960s, you need to make a new decision. Should I, should I uh, stay in stocks or should I go back to gold? Well, the right call here was to go back to gold because by the, uh, oh no, sorry, to stay in stocks again. Eh? Uh, <laughs> because uh, if you look at 1970, the average return of stocks is uh, still a respectable 7%. Uh, whereas uh, gold still, uh, again, gave you 0% per year in the 1960s. So for three decades, since the 1940s, you should have, in 1940, you should have chosen stocks. 1950, you should have chosen stocks. 1960, you should have chosen stocks because 30 years in a row, stocks go up here. 
It's only in 1970 when nobody believes in gold anymore and, and uh, gold investors have been totally wiped out huh, um, uh, that you actually should switch to gold again because by 1980, the average return of stocks is only 9%, whereas the average return of gold is 30% per year in the 70s. Um, uh, yeah, uh, And then what should you do in the 1980s? Well, the 1980s, um, you should have switched back to stocks because by 1990, the average return of stocks is 15% per year. Eh? So that was the average return in the 1980s, very good. Whereas gold gives you minus 4% per year. Eh? So you should have switched back to stocks. And then in 1990, you have to make a new decision. What shall I do? And uh, the right decision was to stay in stocks again and not go back to gold because by 2000, uh, the average return of stocks continues to be 12% per year. Whereas gold continues to lose versus the US dollar, eh? that uh, 4% per year. Uh, but um, after inflation, of course, is not 4, but it's like 9% per year here. Eh? So you lose 10% per year. Uh, and this is like 20 years in a row, eh? because in 1990, it's also 10% per year you lost after inflation. Eh? So over 20 years, you basically lose 10% uh, per year with gold after inflation. These are huge losses. Eh? Uh, and, and after inflation, you, you make with stocks here 6% uh, per year and in 1990, 10% per year. Uh, so these are big profits. Eh? Um, but, uh, but so to avoid, to have to make these choices, which are very, very difficult, eh? because how would, you, how would you know? Like, this is so difficult, typical. Uh, we see that in crypto also, like it always goes higher uh, than you expect and always goes lower than you expect. But this is also true just in the broad markets. Uh, nobody would have expected uh, these kind of movements. Uh, it's just crazy. Yeah, the first movements you can like predict, uh, but it always goes much deeper or much higher. And so it's so difficult to make the right calls eh, to which assets shall I choose. And so, and, and it requires a lot of study, a lot of intelligence too. Um, and so you could just say, okay, let's forget about that. Let's just take 50% gold, 50% stocks. And then we will have an average respectable return. And this is what you see with the PP then. Eh? What are the average returns here? Uh, if we start this portfolio, so you have like 4% uh, uh, per year here uh, uh, in 1930s. It, and then it goes up to 9% um, uh, nine, nine per year, 1950s. Um, and then uh, it goes down again, 70s to 4% per year. Uh, sorry, uh, 60s gives you only 4% per year. Uh, but then, uh, because you have such a big gold position, uh, you get the huge returns in, in 1980s. You have an average of 20% per year. Uh, and then um, it goes down again because, uh, uh, like, your gold, uh, your stock exposure is quite low uh, compared to gold. It's 50 50, but, but it does mean uh, that uh, during the good times, uh, the 90s, uh, your average returns are only 5% per year. Um, uh, and then in 2000, your average returns are also still 5% per year. In 2010, it goes up again because we had a new gold period. Eh? In 2000, you should have switched again from stocks to gold because gold gives you 18% uh, per year, whereas stocks give you 3% per year uh, from 2000 till 2010. So, 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 but uh, due to that, the permanent portfolio has 11% uh, per year, uh, which is much better than if you would have an investment just mainly in stocks. Um, but uh, but um, and then now uh, the last uh, years um, uh, you can see that it's equal. Huh? Uh, but but how how can how can you see this um, this uh, reversing? Well, you see a clear pattern here. Eh? I, I put it in green, uh, the one that has the highest returns. And so you can see it starts here green. Gold is highest returns in the 40s, uh, thanks to the increase in the 50s. But then in the 40s, uh, gold, uh, sorry, stocks start to take over and the highest returns are in stock for a long time from the 40s till uh, here, uh, early 70s, uh, they are the highest returns. But then uh, gold picks over again and now gold has the high, highest return from 73 till uh, 83, early 80s. Gold was the right thing to be. And then stocks pick up again and now stocks go up. Uh, stocks uh, are the best investment till, um, it says green here, till 2006. 
And then uh, you should have been uh, switched to gold because gold gives a higher returns. Actually, this is a 10 year delay. So actually, it's always a couple of years before you should have switched. Uh, so, so you should have switched in 2000 uh, to, uh, to gold. Um, but uh, you can see then that it starts to show in the 10 year returns that uh, these are the highest returns here. Huh? But so, so gold has been the, be uh, the, the over the past 10 years, the best investment. Uh, uh, but this is of course with a delay here. Um, but when should you have switched to, uh, to, to stocks while well, gold picked out here in 2011? Uh, and uh, the bad years are starting here. So you should have switched here to uh, stocks again. Uh, but um, but so the question is, uh, um, uh, uh, what's next? And uh, and I think uh, I've discussed this in other videos. Uh, I will link this one also below. Um, uh, is it time for a commodity cycle again? Uh, but I don't think so. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the periods where stocks go up are a lot longer than the periods where gold go up. And we only have two periods here. Since 1928, where gold goes up, it's in the 30s and the 70s, uh, and then in 2000 again. So three periods, but every period only takes 10 years, uh, whereas uh, the stock periods uh, take a lot longer. They can take 20 to 30 years, uh, and so and so and so uh, the stock period has just started um, in, um, in 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 very recently here. This is the stock period is starting here. And, only in 2010-11 uh, do stocks start to outperform gold. It just started. It's just, it's just so unlikely that we will get a commodity cycle again uh, right now. Uh, very unlikely. Uh, this is just so clear from this chart that you should stay in stocks for at least another 10 years, possibly another 20 years. Um, uh, and so, so I was wrong in my analyze. I thought we had a high odds for a negative year here in 2018 in stocks, but this is just that was just I was just wrong. Uh, this is not true. Actually, uh, stocks um, have just started their bull market only eight years ago. There's another 30 years to go. I thought that we had like all, all many years of since 2009. I thought we had only positive years. But that's if you look at the, at the, at the S&P 500. I do, don't do that here. I look at the global stock market. And actually, that's not true. Then you had like a, a negative year in 2011. Uh, and you had in 2015 also a bad year, uh, 0%. Uh, it was negative, uh, uh, minus 0.5%, something like that. So you had actually two negative years. Uh, so it's not like, oh, we had 10 years of uh, positive uh, years in the stock market, so it's time for a negative year. No, it's actually pretty mixed and it's not uh, it's, it's not extravagant returns because the last 10 years, we have an average return of 4% per year in the stock market. This is low. It's low. <laughs> it can be much higher. Eh? Here in, in, in 2000, you have an average return of three times higher over the last 10 years. Eh? In the 1990s, it's even more. Eh? So average returns of the last 10 years can be 20% per year, not 4% 4, 4 per year. So I was really wrong about this. Uh, and, and of course, you can always get a negative year, but the odds are not in your favor here. Like I don't, like, there's always possible a negative year, but this is hard, much harder to predict, but even that has low odds. But since you're in a long-term bull cycle, like you can't really, that's just a bad, a bad bet to take. And the same for gold in the inverse. Sure, you can have a positive year in 2018, but gold will be in a bear market for a very, very, very long time. It just started seven years ago, eight years ago. It will have a bear market for very likely at least 20 years and possibly 30 years. So well, I think it's very interesting and, and the time keeps on going. I think I'm going to have to uh, close this down because otherwise it's too long. Um, Post your questions below in the video and, uh, and, and, and maybe I'll make another one um, talking more about this. Uh, but I think it's, it's so interesting and, uh, and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.